one nice thing uh, is that these readings are quite short compared with the chapters that we have been reading throughout the year. So I do have a short one for you today, although I've lengthened it uh, just a little bit from the classic reading that you will have in a carol service uh, for the fun of it. Uh, so, yeah, we're going to hear that reading together. We are going to reflect upon what it might mean for us. And then after everything, we're going to lift all of that up in prayer to God. Hope it's helpful for you today. Isaiah, chapter 9, verses 2 to 7, from the New Century Version. Before, those people lived in darkness, but now they have seen a great light. They lived in a dark land, but a light has shined on them. God, you have caused the nation to grow and made the people happy, and they have shown their happiness to you like the joy during harvest time, like the joy of people, taking what they have won in war, like the time you defeated Midian. You have taken away their heavy load and their heavy pole from their backs and the rod the enemy used to punish them. Every boot that marched in battle and every uniform stained with blood has been thrown into the fire. A child has been born to us. God has given a son to us. He will be responsible for leading the people. His name will be Wonderful Counselor, Powerful God, Father who lives forever, Prince of Peace. Power and peace will be in his kingdom and he will continue to grow forever. He will rule as King David as king on David's throne and over David's kingdom. He will make it strong by ruling with justice and goodness from now on and forever. The Lord all-powerful will do this because of his strong love for his people. So we have some uh, very powerful words there from Isaiah. Now, I'm presuming that most of you are watching uh, the Sunday services uh, that we're putting out on YouTube. And so you're following uh, the readings that we're using there, in which case you will be familiar slightly uh, with where uh, the situation is in Isaiah, because we've been using quite a lot of those readings. So I did, like I said, include a few extra verses. Often you just have Isaiah chapter to 9 verse 2 and then it it switches it skips to 6 and 7 at the end the unto you a child is born and I was I deliberately uh, kept the context in and there's a reason for that uh, which is that yes Isaiah is pointing to Jesus definitely without a shadow of a doubt that is what I believe um, that Isaiah um, is, is foretelling. However, Isaiah also has a message to those people at that time. So, yes, it's a prophecy that concerns Jesus, but it's not only a prophecy concerning Jesus. Because for those people who are experiencing um, the, the Assyrian um, Empire sort of, at their doors and in constant worry um, they needed comfort too and God was comforting to them because God is a God who comforts that's actually what this scripture is about now we know that God in wanting to sort out the world in in order to bring peace ultimately Jesus is the answer God's been doing that work throughout the entirety of the Bible, throughout the entirety of history. And so the reason I think this is significant right at this moment in time is that God is comforting for us today. And that can be wonderful when we're contemplating it 
at Christmas. Um, but um, I don't know about you, the moment Christmas is over, I'm kind of done with winter, even though it's just beginning. And that's very poignant, isn't it? Because the hope begins at Christmas. It's really important that we don't just leave it there, that we don't just leave what we've learned in that m moment of Christmas. Oh, the light has come. But then we forget about it in the dark days of January, in the coldness of early February. Now, God's prophecy is for the future, for the present. It was for the past because God is always working his purposes. God is always trying to reach out to a people um, that are deeply loved and cherished. So I invite you to to try and hold on to some of the things that we're contemplating during this time and the hope that does come down at Christmas, but that should sustain us all the years of our lives. In the bleak midwinter, from Oh, oh, oh.
Let's pray. Lord God, thank you that we can spend this time contemplating your goodness, contemplating how you reach out to creation, how you bring people to you. We thank you, Lord God, that we have been so blessed as to understand and comprehend the love that you showed through Jesus and through your encounters throughout history. We pray, Lord, that as we think on your hope and light amidst darkness, it would not just be a momentary comfort, a short respite, but that that hope would permeate our lives, that we could hold fast to that hope. Lord, we pray that what you're revealing to us now will see us far beyond Christmas and into the dark days ahead, whether that be seasonal or whether it be the difficulties facing our world at this time. Help fix in us an assurity of your faithfulness to us, that that can bring us comfort and courage as we live our lives as disciples of Christ. Amen.